there's some major advantage to the stress transport models. And uh, of course, they have a bigger advantage in finding some sort of universality. Um, and they have more physics and less assumptions. But on the other hand, the downside is they're extremely difficult to close relative to other models. And we'll see why this is in a few minutes. Sometimes they're also referred to as second order closures. or second moment closures. And the good thing about the models is they include effects like curvature and sudden changes in mean strain rate. And that's great because we don't have to include them uh, explicitly like in previous models. Unfortunately, there's a big price to be paid for their evaluation and often have greater computational difficulties in their uh, computation. Uh, generally, researchers use the same starting point for these models, which we'll show in a second, and we derived this equation previously in the class. And there's an exact differential transport equation describing the behavior of the specific Reynolds stress. And that equation is listed right here in 7.34. It's for tau ij. And in the incompressible form we use here, we'll say that is negative ui prime u, whoops, an i, j prime bar. So here's the form, transport type equation. And for closure, it has three major terms which are listed here. And there they are in the equation where I'm highlighting them. So the first one, 735, this is the pressure strain diffusion term. The second is the dissipation. And the third is called turbulent transport. And we're just going to talk about the basic closures of these three in somewhat order of increasing difficulty. So you can see this goes here, this goes here, and this goes here. So we'll probably talk about 736 first, and then 737, and then 735. The 735 is probably the most difficult to close. And we'll make some notes about these. And uh, so the problem of turbulence modeling is that we have to not only close this equation, but we usually might also want to track another model. And often people use the standard epsilon or omega specific dissipation type models in addition. And those might come from our previous closures or be reformulated for a stress transport model. So we do expect, for the reasons I just listed in this class, that this type of model would automatically correct for some of the things, uh, like curvature or fast changes in mean strain, secondary motions, et cetera, shock separation, boundary layer separation. So we need to look and say, OK, well, this equation does account for some of the confection and diffusion terms and flow history. And other major things it accounts for is, say, number one, a dissipation and turbulent transport terms. And that'll include the presence of time scales unrelated to the mean flow time scales. So therefore, the history effect should be realistically represented with these models. Two. 
two, second major point, is the equation 734, the specific Reynolds stress tensor equation, will contain convection, production, and body forces if we want them that respond automatically to effects such as streamline curvature, rotation, stratification, etc. So it contains convection, production, and this overcomes some of our difficulties, which we just noted for realm stress. And three, there's no real reason for the normal stresses to be equal, even when the mean straight rate vanishes, which is good. That is like an isotropic flow. Before we get into the closure of these three terms, let's just talk about the history of their closure. The first type of closures were actually put forward by Chow, 1945, which is the end of World War II, and Rhoda. 1951, and they both proposed closures for these three particular terms, and we use a lot of their work still today, but they didn't carry out any numerical predictions. And that shouldn't be surprising to us at all. Why? Because they didn't have powerful digital computers. People weren't even able to carry out numerical predictions with zero equation models for another 20 or 30 years. Two other major authors, Donaldson in 1968 advocated the concept of invariant modeling. And that's where you establish a type of closure that rigorously satisfies coordinate invariance. The last one I wanted to mention, Lumley in 1978 I believe at Cornell, developed a systematic procedure for representing closures that guarantees reliability. And this is a topic of debate still today, and that means that all the physically positive definite turbulence properties can be computed computationally, and that their correlation coefficients will be between negative one and one. So that means positive definite closure and correlations, I'll call them physical. So in the next video, the following from this one, we'll talk about how we do these three major closures for, and then maybe look at a few models.